The last of the filters that I'm actually going to focus on is the mass tool. Now, for those of you using older versions of the Grass Valley products, such as Edius, or even going back to the old Canopus days of Rex Edit and Storm Edit, this was called the Region Tool. And the Region Tool did some fun things, but it only allowed you to be able to kind of create a rectangle or an ellipse, and that was it. The mass tool has gone very, very far. This, as, as a matter of fact, starting in version 6, it became an incredibly powerful tool. So what I'm going to do to begin with is do something rather simple. I just want to highlight somebody. So let's say I want to highlight my friend Greg here on his shot. And let's say that he was in a crowd and I wanted to highlight him or I just wanted to make him, everybody notice him, you know, type of thing. It's a very simple process. And this is one of the things I love about the tools inside of EDIUS is that the engineers that create this program really do try to create very powerful tools. But yet, if you only need to use it simply to keep it simple enough to where you're not having to go through a bunch of work just to do simple things such as this. I'm going to bring the mask tool down on top of this shot. And here we go. We have the mask tool on it. I'm going to open the mask tool up and you can see here that I do have the ellipse. I do have the rectangle if I want to be able to use those. I have the same key framer so that I'm able to go through and key th frame things. And on the right hand side, I have opacity. I have on the inside and outside edge, I can sit there and change filters. I can do all sorts of stuff. And we're going to go into that in just a few moments. But I want to keep this very, very simple. First, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the ellipse. And all I'm going to do is I am just going to put it right around his head right there. And then I don't want to do, well, I'll do the inside and outside. So on the inside, I'm going to check filter, then the select a filter. I'm going to come in once again, color correction, color balance, select OK, and then go into the setup of it. And of course, I made that huge last time we were on here. And all I'm going to do is just bring up the brightness somewhat to where he's being kind of illuminated there. I'm going to select OK on this. And then on the outside of the filter, I'm going to do basically the same kind of thing. I'm going to pick a filter, color correction, color balance, select OK. And once again, bring color balance up. And then on the outside of it, I'm just going to bring down my brightness just a tad. So now if I want to illuminate somebody or really show them in the shot and be able to follow them or something of that nature, then what I've done here is with my mask tool, I was able to draw this ellipse and bring down my brightness a little bit out here and bring it up a little bit in here so I'm not going off the scale either in my darks or lights and still be able to illuminate the individual and I just play it and there he is and he's not moving much so it really doesn't matter. Now on the next shot that I want to be able to use this on let's get a little bit more complicated. Here we are back here at this shot again where I want to change the color of the red to into blue. But my problem was, if you'll remember, that as I started to change the color and tried to get it down here changed, that it started changing things up here also, and that I could not envelop the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is, once again, I'm going to grab my mask tool. I'm going to bring it down on that shot. So now I have three-way color correction, chrominance, and the mask tool sitting on it. I'm going to bring that mask tool up again. Now, on this shot right here, what I'm going to do is, is that I'm just going to use this time the rectangle. And I'm going to start down here. And I'm going to draw a rectangle that basically goes right there and envelops all of that. So now I have this entire thing enveloped. In fact, it's a little bit too large, to be honest with you. I want to get it as small as possible and still have it work correctly. Okay, so I'm just bringing it down to where it's just going to get everything in there and nothing else. Now, because I've created this region or mask right here, I can manipulate the inside of it while leaving the outside of it completely alone. So I'm going to go into the inside of it, and what am I going to pick? I'm going to pick chrominance because I wanted to change the color. I'm going to select OK. Go into the setup of chrominance right there. And then... Once again, remember our eyedropper didn't really work that well, but I'm going to go ahead and pick the red again with the eyedropper just to see how it works again. I'm going to go into my color wheel this time. I'm going to go in the setup of it. Change it to that blue that I had before, and then realize, of course, that it's not going to go in and cover all of it. So I'm going to come in, get a color range finder, show my histogram, 
And this time, I'm going to change the color of the entire thing. Now I've changed the color of the entire railing and the railing looks blue instead of red. And I was able to do this without affecting the rest of the shot because of the fact that I was used my mask tool to be able to mask off where the red was and to be able to exclude everything else that I was affecting before. So as you can see here, not only the filter is very powerful, but when you combine these filters, first off I did the three-way color correction to bring the colors back into what the colors really were. Then I went in with my mask tool and I was able to mask off part of it and then inside of that be able to use my chrominance tool to be able to pick a range of colors and then be able to change that color into something else while leaving the outside of that mask completely and totally alone. And as you can see here, how long did that take to render? It didn't take any time at all. I've done all of this work on this shot and no background rendering or anything else and I'm able to see it in full frame rate, full res. And if I had a monitor here that I was really looking at, like a broadcast monitor or something, I could really get good details and be able to see everything perfectly. So the mask tool can be used to illuminate somebody. The mask tool can be used to work on just a certain area. However, it goes a little deeper than that. The last thing I'm going to do with the mask tool here is I'm going to go into this a little bit more and I'm not going to try and do this perfectly because once again, just like any other of the more complicated tools, we could do an hour to two hours on each one of them. But I'm going to come down on this shot and bring the mask down on this shot right here. And I'm just going to show this because of the fact that I want you to understand the power of this tool and how this power works. I'm going to bring it up to where we can see it. And this time, instead of using an ellipse or a rectangle, I want to get a little more detailed. And this is what came out brand new in 6, and of course is still here in 6.5. This time what I'm going to do is, is I want to draw a path. Now normally that's a little pin. If this was a little bit wider out, you'd see the pin up there, and that's where the draw the path is. Now I can come in, and I want to look at this a little bit larger. So while I'm drawing the path, I'm going to bring this out a little bit larger, fill my screen with it, go up to 100% right here. And I can go up really large. I mean, if there is a lot of detail, I could go in here and just go into this huge. But I'm just going to leave it at 100% right here and just do my best with this. And I'm going to pick the Draw Path tool right here, and I'm going to start right here. And because of the fact that there's a lot of curves and everything in it, I'm just going to be doing a whole lot of adding of nodes. And I'm adding the nodes just by clicking the left mouse button. So I'm coming in, and I'm trying to get this area that I want to affect. And as I go through and draw this, and like I said, I'm not going to try and do this perfectly because this could take hours to be able to do. But this allows me to be able to come in and do some basically rotoscoping. And I'm just going to do kind of a long one up here so you're not sitting here dying with me while I'm doing this. But see, I can change now to that hand and then bring the hand down and then go back to my pen tool and be able to use my pen tool again and be able to keep the shape going. So I know uh, some people have used this and kind of sat there and said, crud, you know, I'd love to be able to look at it a lot closer, but when I have the pen tool out, I can't move it. Well, you can. You just don't click with the pen tool until you're ready to click with the pen tool. So basically, I'm going to come around, grab all of this. Now, each one of these nodes, by the way, frame by frame, can be sized, can be changed, position of, so in other words, if you wanted to go in and, and do something that literally took a ton of work and took all day to do, you have the capability here in EDIUS to be able to do it right here without having to go anywhere else. I'm almost done here, so I'm going to just finish up. Now I want you to notice that I went out here on this a little bit and got away from where I was. Now when I do this and I get to the last one, now on the last one if I want to, I can just double click and it will connect it. So now you can see I have an actual shape. So I don't just have a rectangle. But right here I got a little messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on it, go to tools, and I'm going to say edit shape. Here all my nodes come up. I can now bring my nodes in. I can change them. If I want to be able to scoot several of them in or out, I can scoot several of them in and out and change their position while leaving the other ones alone if I want to. I can come in and just really start to fix it. And then if I want to change the position of it, I just go back in the tools and just say, select object. 
then I'm able to do this. Now, this shot actually moves. So I'm going to go back 25% right here, and I'm going to bring this out in this way. And I'm at the very beginning of this shot right here, so I'm going to select Mask. Once again, just double-click up here to put all, of the, all the shapes in there that I need to be able to do. And then I can just start to roll my mouse wheel. And as I roll it back towards me, notice that this is starting to move. And so at this point, I need to move it just a tad bit to match it back up again. And then I just roll the mouse wheel again. Notice it moved a little bit more. And I'm just going to move the shape to match in. And now it starts to blow up, however. So now I'm not only going to move it, but I'm also going to size it and bring it up a tad bit more. That was a little bit too large, but you're getting the idea here is what I'm trying to do. I don't want to sit there and do this perfectly because of the fact that it would just take forever to do. But see, now I can sit there and move this. And each one of these keyframes, by the way, I can go in and change the shape if I want to. Like if I don't like what's right there, once again, I can right click, go to tools, edit shape, and I could grab those nodes right there bring them in just a tad bit, and I'm doing it kind of on a large scale. It's kind of hard to see, but notice all the changes, and then just go back in the tools, select object again, and then roll the mouse wheel back towards me again, and just size it up just a tad bit right there. And then before you know it, I'm at the end of the shot. So let me just bring it up a tad bit more, size-wise. Move it over. Move it down some. You're getting the basic idea here of, of, of exactly how it works. So now I've created this shape, and on the outside of it, just to show you how it works, I'm just going to do a block color on the outside of it, and I'll do that white again. So you can see it right there. And I'm going to select OK, and let's play this shot and see how it looks. Now, like I said, it wasn't perfect by any means, but you're getting the idea that you can go in, in the mask tool and how powerful this tool really is. You can go from something just as simple as an ellipse or a rectangle and just leave it stagnant all the way up to creating thousands and thousands of nodes and being able to edit the shape of those nodes and the size of that shape literally frame by frame if you needed to. Now, if I really wanted to, and, and this is kind of rudimentary and it's going to look extremely bad, but I'll just show it to you anyway. I'm going to go into the setup of that filter again, and I'm going to change it to green. Now, if I take this shot, and I'm just going to kind of take this shot and place it over the top of this other shot just so you can see it here for just a moment. I could chroma key that thing right on top. Now, I'm not going to do that yet because we're going to be talking about chroma keying here when we talk about the keyers. But I'll keep this shot just this way right now, and then we can use it when we're talking about chroma key. But that is the mask tool.